Might be too tight. Might be too tight. A couple days ago when we were on the iron arm battling that crazy headwind, I strained a, uh, a muscle on the top of my forearm. It's been bugging me like crazy ever since. So to totally immobilize it so I don't hurt it anymore, I've just wrapped it up. And that's, uh, I cannot move my wrist. What's the hustle and bustle around camp this morning? <laughs> we're just getting ourselves stoked for this long portage we're about to undertake. So we're just getting our final gear all packed up. We have a pretty tight kit right now. We're trying to condense as much as possible so that we limit how much we actually have to carry over uh, individually. So we're all packed up and we're pretty much about to start this 10K portage. We're gonna find out how bad it really is. We know it's bad, it's just how bad. The overland portage between the Depa River and the George River was first coined in modern day standards by Stu Coffin in 1982. Since then, only a handful of canoeists have attempted this route. The crossing in its entirety is approximately 30 kilometers and starts with 10 kilometers of portaging up the Party Creek, followed by pond hopping to the height of land and then finishing with a downriver paddle on an unnamed river. If all goes well, the crossing may take two to three days. So we're in the thick of it now. It's going through a spruce bog. She's thick. She's thick. Ain't no portage when I'm gone, when I'm gone, <laughs> baby, when I'm gone. So we're on our way to a pond before the George River right now, crashing through this forest. The bugs are thick, the forest is thicker. Every once in a while we stumble upon a nice animal trail, such as this. And we make a couple extra uh, meters of distance. And uh, I think we've probably gone, I think we've probably only done about two kilometers for the day. Like we've been probably at this for like five hours already. Five hours, two kilometers. Yep. <laughs> As the day carried on, we slowly moved all our gear one load at a time. The packs were heavy and the work was a true test of our bodies and patience. But we all knew what we had to do. We had to keep pushing forward no matter how uncomfortable and tired we were, because we had no other choice. Quick update here, it's 5.30. We've been portaging for all day, nine hours, all through thick bush. We finally came to another, a creek that we couldn't pass by foot, so we built a bridge with our canoes. Today, we portage between those mountains. The long, long, long day. And we're still going. I don't even think you can see all the bugs right now. They're friggin' atrocious. So bad. Oh. So we made it as far as we can go today. We portaged for almost 12 hours through animal trails, bushwhacking, 
blazing our own trails. But you know what? End of the day, no one's hurt. We didn't lose any gear. Godspeed, everyone. Long live the king. <laughs> and you know what? During this entire time, I've been keeping some friends along the way that have been living in my shirt. Hey, what do you got on your pants, buddy? These are all living inside of my shirt, dead. For the day. Yeah, they just they go in here, and then I guess I smack them, or they, they suffocate, and then they just fall to, to my pouch. How many bugs do you have on your head right now? About 9,000. <sighs> Hard to count. Yeah. Somewhere around there, though. Pretty close to it. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's morning, day 10. Uh, double digits, yeah. Uh, we're trying to find the height of land between the Depa River and the George River. And we're gonna get there today, no matter what. Doesn't matter what happens. Right? <laughs> we're gonna get there today. So I think that's like, we have a still water, there's a surprise around the corner. We surprise, we don't know what it is. And then uh, we know we're pond hopping with a lot of portages in between. So we're just gonna grind it out like we did yesterday and hopefully, Hopefully, it's a little bit less work. But I'm not holding my breath on that one. <laughs> I wouldn't. It's gonna be a good day. You find a line, boys. We'll go find a line, boys. You just remember where we went and didn't get. Right from the start, the ponds were shallow and rocky and required us to walk our boats as we tried to balance on the slippery rocks. Eventually the ponds narrowed into a creek and we were able to track our canoes along the shore. But as we made our way further up, the current became stronger. When will the boys get to the height of land? We don't know, but we keep going. When will the boys get to the height of land? We don't know, but we keep going. So we were trying to line up river, but uh, it got a little too hairy. So we decided to portage. And just as that was happening, we got hit by hail, believe it or not. But on this portage, we've got some pretty magnificent views. We're following right along a river here. You can hear it kind of crashing down below. Making our way to the height of land. Another height of land anyways. We have finished lining that river and we came to a glorious lake close to the height of land. But there is ample amount of water to paddle. It's crazy to think the last people to paddle through here would have been a long time ago.
when will the boys make it to the height of land? The answer is now. We made it. We're on the lake behind this rock. And we think we're going to try one last portage to flow down to the other side. Because why not enjoy a little downflow, right? Yeah, but we're still kind of on the fence about this one. So we'll see. I think we're pretty committed at this point. The boys are already making their way down river. That looks like commitment, I don't know. <laughs> so we decided to do one more portage for the day. And obviously once again. Just a complete swamp. It's gross, but you know, better than having to do this first thing in the morning when your feet are fresh. Just get it over with while your feet are still wet. At least it's a little bit more open than the thick bush that we were blasting through yesterday. Yes, I know the chill you're spreading And I know your eyes that burn And I recognize Your lonesome cold You are to me just like a fairy tale That I stroll through so all alone And I know your name It's winter cold Your gown is grey and blue But I'm so deep I feel Breakfast is ready. Awesome, man. So after that two day portage, we now have about a 10 kilometer unnamed river that'll take us to the George. Things are looking up for us. We happen to catch a few trout for lunch today. Show, show the kids, you got them at your feet? A uh, brookie and a lake trout. Maybe get a couple more for lunch because we haven't really had much protein recently. So yeah, it's looking good. We don't know where all the sets of rapids are here because there's no information, but uh, they're really playful. They're like maybe class one technical, uh, maybe class, probably not class two, but they are a lot of fun. And I'd say we hit one class two, the one up above. All right, well maybe, yeah, we've maybe hit some class twos, but they've all been manageable. We haven't had to get out of the canoe once so far, and the fish are out. After all those days of uphill travel and portaging and bushwhacking our way, it is so nice going downhill all these rivers just flowing into, e into each other. It's just nice to have downstream travel. Easy living. <laughs> Easy, Easy living out here. I'll say it once, I'll say it twice. Easy living. See if the boys like a little Mickey fin in their mouths. I, I wouldn't like that, so like try not to hook me in the face. <laughs> so we were running a set of rapids and we ended up getting hung up on uh, the bottom set where it was just shallow and rocky and we just didn't see where the, the V was, the deep water channel. But it turned into a great opportunity for us to bust out some fishing rods while we were stuck here and actually hooked into quite a few brook trout. Sometimes the bad things aren't always so bad. Actually worked out.
Dave got us another brook trout. We're eating tonight, eh? Yeah, boys, we're eating tonight. Fish for lunch, fish for dinner. That's how you make a puree without a fork. All right, so the boys have been having a great day on the river so far, making our way to the George River. Lots of sets of rapids, lots of fish, finally. And so we've found ourselves a nice spot here on shore to cook ourselves up a shore lunch. Sweet. Sweet city woman. After lunch, Alex and I switched seats so Alex could paddle stern down the final section of the river. Both Alex and I prefer the stern, so when we're running whitewater, we try to make it so we both have an equal amount of time in the back. Take the right side down. Draw. We're going right to the middle there and we're just going to splash through. Yep. We came to a section where the river narrowed and dropped off a rock ledge. We couldn't see anything, so we paddled over to the island to scout if there was a line. F that! <laughs> no way! <laughs> you can run that solo if you want. Hard no! Hard no! It's like a waterfall! <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta know when it's time to make a portage rather than trying to run a set of rapids that looks like this. A little farther downriver, we got to the confluence of the unnamed river and the George River. But before reaching the George, we had to negotiate one last set of rapids. Okay, I think I see it. So we're kind of hugging the rocks that we can see above water on the left. This one was more technical than the ones before. just below the surface that we couldn't see until we were right on top of them. Go left. Woo! We tried to bring the boat around, but we ended up getting hung up again. We're good, we're flipping around. This was a close call. Got ourselves a special day here. <laughs> hey everybody, we have <laughs> ourselves a special day here. Uh, we made it down uh, No Name River, aka Topster River, aka Leon River, aka Riviera Leon. Riviera Leon. Anyways, <laughs> the point of the story is, is that we've made it to the George River. So we've actually done the uh, Stu Coffin crossover the height of land from the Depot to the George successfully. Would you recommend it to others? Yeah, I would recommend it to others, yeah. It's, yeah. Something, it's something everyone should experience in Absolutely. their life. Absolutely, it's something, it's character building, yeah. Just don't lose your buddy's fishing rod. <laughs> yeah, we lost a rod today. Considering that's the only thing we've lost so far though, like, not bad. Yeah, but we're out here on the George now. Now it's just all upriver from here. <laughs> Again. <laughs>
So how many bottles of whiskey do we bring? Uh, I think we have six Mickeys of whiskey and they've all been used for special occasions. Dave busts out the first one, we did the first Head of Land and this is another big spot for us making it to the George. So we will have our second flask. So cheers to the river gods. It's been a hell of a ride to get here and uh, we're not done yet. Traveling through these areas, I seem to have picking up chicken pox. Got them all over my body, don't know how I got them. But you can see here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> the chicken pox are all over the place. So no, no, I have them all over my arm too. <laughs> oh my god. Chicken pox. I got them as a kid, so I don't know why I got them again. <laughs> so Noah and Chris have both been destroyed by the bugs in various places. Chris behind the ears and the neck. How's that feel? Feels pretty good. Feels good. <laughs> yeah. We got them pretty good and then Noah got it on the arms. I had a hole in here and I guess I think when I was carrying the canoe, they found the hole and just penetrated it. And they just lived in there all day. Just There's added to some of the pain crossing the idle land. You got another hole right there. Sure. Yeah, I'll tilt that up. <laughs> So this is a rack that you can buy at your local Ikea. Just a sock drying rack, really. Dave, you modeled this off of an Ikea. Yeah, that's exactly right, yeah. It's assemble yourself though. Yeah, gonna dry those socks up real nice. Probably not dry, maybe just heat them up. <laughs> <laughs> so when you put them back on your feet again, it's not as bad. So we've been having some trouble landing some fish uh, it's a bit of a bit of a chase and grab trying to get them in the boat when we're on the water so I'm working on net here and right now I'm just cutting the, the cords for it we have uh, we already have the hoop bent that I did previously out of a piece of green spruce then just did a cord wrap put it together and let it dry for a few days and it uh, seems solid now, and now I'm just working on the, the net part. What's your strategy with the net here? So, I'm just cutting a bunch of the same length strings from this cord here. So right now I'm making the actual netting part, and it's pretty easy. I've got strings folded over and spaced out uh, evenly, more or less, between along the hoop here. And all it is, is you take opposing strings and you throw in a quick overhand knot, both of them. Just try to keep it somewhat equal distance. It's not, uh, it's not a Swiss watch, so it can be a little off. And then, once you've completed a row, which I'm about to do here, you move on and you just take opposing strings again and tie those together. We got the weave here, and then all that's left is to do the final tie off the bottom and make it an actual net. And I'm just going to go across here, grab two strings that are more or less across from each other directly, and then just take the four and do another overhand knot in there. And that'll leave me with enough tail here to connect Whoa. all the knots once they're made. Oh, I'm sorry, am I ruining your sound clip here? Sorry. I'll shut up. You just, Dave, shut up. We're doing things. Just stop talking. We're taking a video here, Dave. Very important. He only finishes this once. Oh, man. There's product there. It's solid. That looks so good. Melty. Yep, got some fish in her. Unreal. <laughs> we got there. This is Dave's taco surprise with brook trout seasoning from earlier today. You'd order this online for like 
30 bucks, but here it is. Here's your wild brook chart on, boy. Dave, you've what? got two things going on with or two different heights that you can reach with your shoulders right now. Yeah, I do. This one goes real high. This one does not. Is the guitar helping? Guitar helps a lot, yeah. It soothes everything. <laughs> 